Okay, so thanks to organizers and especially Kui and uh, uh, again for the organization. I'm very glad to be here to share with you our recent work on social learning complex networks. And I'm afraid that a number, a number of you here might not be that familiar with this research topic. But I'm sure that all of you must know that uh, the airline flight MH370, which we have been searching for more than one month. In fact, I think this multinational joint effort in searching for the flight is, in fact, an uh, excellent example to show both the power and the difficulties of cooperation and other such learning. So, I, in this talk, I just use this very reason and this example to show the basic ideas of social learning. So, I first give a very general background of what do we mean by social learning. In fact, all of our social interactions are more or less, more or less shaped by our beliefs or our, our <coughs> opinions. Of course, most of us, we just take it for granted. For example, I think a few of us here could have tasted all of the food uh, around the world or see all of the movies in the world. However, uh, most of us have our own beliefs, our own opinions on which kind of food we, we like, what kind of movie we like to see, and what kind of education we uh, believe are good or uh, <coughs> which candidate we would like to support and so on. And what's more interesting, or uh, also what's more complex, is that we also have our beliefs about how others will act in different situations, which will in turn guide our own social behaviors. And what's more complex is that these, our own beliefs are intertwined with some social norms, such as what we deem to be as accepted behavior. For example, should we help somebody who falls down the street and so on? So by social learning, we are interested in <clears throat> how do we form our beliefs and opinions, and also how will the beliefs and the opinions evolve as, over time? In fact, such a learning process is a feedback process which involves our personal our own experience, which we also call the individual learning on some issues such as education or medical systems. Uh, and also, it depends on uh, whom do we communicate with to share with our own information, and also it relies on uh, how do we update our rules based on our, our own uh, experience and based on the opinions of our neighbors. And we all know that, in fact, in some cases, it might be uh, uh, for, for some people, they are very much, uh, how to say, uh, susceptible. They are very easy to change their opinions uh, <coughs> based on opinions of their friends. Okay, and some other people, uh, in terms of social learning, are something like cyber agents, which have a rather fixed and unchangeable opinions. Right, so. Different people might have different update rules, but here we just assume that all the agencies now have the same uh, update, update rule just for simplicity. Okay, so over the years, a number of issues have been addressed in social learning research. However, three kind of problems uh, uh, pay much more attention. The first one is about consensus. Which, which is about on what conditions can we eventually hold the same views, can we eventually uh, approach to the uh, uh, same idea, same opinion, same belief on, on some issues, even though we may start from different opinions at the beginning. Uh, in some cases, 
Arriving concerns might be very simple. For example, suppose that we have, uh, say, for example, three restaurants to choose for, for the dinner. We may just have a very short dis uh, discussion to choose one restaurant as the place for dinner. Uh, but in some other cases, it might be very difficult to uh, arrive consensus. One typical example is education. Different people might have different opinions on what is a good education, right? But what's more important here is that just arriving consensus in many cases are far from enough. The searching for MH370 is an example. So at, at the beginning, we know that, that we thought the, the airplane should be in the ocean, which is near Vietnam, right at the beginning. But that belief tur turned out to be wrong. Right now, we thought that the, the flight should be in the India place, uh, India Ocean, which is near Australia, right? So as we get more and more in, uh, information, we, we may uh, more and more approaching the true, true state. So that's the second problem in social learning. On the, what conditions can we effectively aggregate those dispersed information so that we can eventually get the right state, uh, which in the flight in, in the example is the right place of the airplane, right? And the third, third one is about control, which, which becomes more and more important in such a narrow area. Uh, for, for example, as we all know, in Facebook or Twitter or in China, Weibo or Weixin, right? How much is the room for those prominent agents, for those media sources, for, for those leaders? Uh, to, uh, to control, to manipulate the beliefs of the individuals on the network. So, uh, in th this talk, I've uh, just used two of our recent ones to uh, should uh, 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 work on consensus and co co correct consensus. I started from the, a classic Kenyan consensus model, which was proposed proposed by HK is, is based on the classic homophily principle in social networks, which uh, states simply is that people become friends just because they are similar to each other. So in this model, it's assumed that two agents are neighbors, if on, on the, and only if the difference between their opinions are less than a constant R, which is which we call the confidence uh, radio. So, and uh, at every time step, each agent updates its opinion, just as the average of all its neighbors' opinion at last time step. So, this model is in fact very simple, and uh, uh, it turned out that in order to achieve a con consensus, the confidence radio should be large enough, otherwise we'll see such kind of segmentation. So, in our recent work, we generalized this model to try to incorporate randomly in the model. We assume that in addition to those labels within the confidence region, we assume that each individual also has a few random labels, and the uh, how do we choose these this random neighbors? We uh, use such an uh, exponential function as the probability to choose the uh, random neighbors. Here, uh, as you can see that there are parameter alpha which determines the degree of randomness. If, uh, if alpha, is, uh, alpha equals zero, then those ran na random neighbors are really choose complete and random. And uh, if, if alpha is sufficiently large, then this model just very similar to the original HK model. So with, with this model, theoretically, we, can, we could prove right now that consensus could be achieved 
and within finite steps, and we provide an upbound for the convergence uh, time. So this is the benefit of a model compared, com uh, compared to the classic HK model. Uh, here is the simulation uh, uh, which shows the convergence time as a function of the parameter alpha and beta. Uh, as you can see that as alpha approaching zero, which means that uh, as we choose the, uh, those neighbors completely randomly and we could get a fast convergence speed. So this shows that randomness does benefit consensus. We also consider the case that if we just skip up the abundance motor, we just assume that each agent has a few random random neighbors. And with, with this model, we could still prove that consensus can be achieved, but in this case, it's in a probability sense. Uh, so uh, this is our first work just on the consensus. Now, I spend more time on how to achieve correct consensus, which, which is much more important in social learning. Okay, so I still use the MH370 as an example to show how could we formulate such a problem mathematically. All right, so first we have state space, which just tell us those possible areas for the airplane, right? We have n possible areas for uh, for for, uh, for this flight, and of course there are just only one two states, one two place for the flight, but we just don't know right now. But the two state does exist in this case, so that's what we are looking for. We are searching for. So each country, each country has its own exam, uh, own information, which we call the private signal, based on the on the sheep, on the sheep, on the on the on the airplane, on the analysis uh, of the pin signal between the uh, the flight and the satellite, and so on. Right. So each country has its own private signal which is represented by a likelihood function. So each country must share its information with other countries. So it constitutes the network structure. But here we know that, for example, Australia might wish to share all, all its information with the United States but it, did, it might not wish to share some sensitive information with China, right? So it does exist some, network, some kind of network structure here. Uh, but anyway, uh, information sharing is very, very important in social learning. So each, each country, each agent in the network has a belief at time T. Which state? might be the true state. Of course, uh, uh, this belief should uh, satisfy the uh, normalization condition. So the problem here is that on the, what conditions can we eventually find out the underlying true state? So mathematically, it's just the, just that uh, this probability sh should tend to when as time tends to infinity. So that's our problem, problem uh, here. We, so we, with this formulation, we can try to inve investigate this problem theoretically and, uh, and uh, numerically. So I just first to show two extreme cases. On one hand, it's just based on individual learning based on the classical basic rule, which means that each agent try to update its beliefs based on just the, its own information. Each agent does not communicate with any other agents in the network. 
So, so uh, that's what we call the individual learning. So, with, with the problem with this individual learning is that this agent should have the accurate knowledge of the true state in order to find find out what the true state eventually. So that's in fact a very strict condition. On the other hand, on the other hand, suppose that every agent in the network does not to use its own information, but just take its opinion as the average of other other agents in the network. And in this extreme case, we could prove that consensus can be achieved very easily. But, of course, the problem here is that such kind of consensus are generally not the right consensus. So, so we could see that there are problems with, problems with these two extreme cases. So, the natural step is that what if we combine these two extreme cases together? So that is what, what we call a hybrid social learning model. We try to put the individual basing and the group consensus algorithm together to, to get this model. And now the problem is that on the, what conditions can this model lead to the true social learning? Uh, here's the main theoretical result. The first condition is that the network should be collected, which is a very natural condition, right? It should be a collected network. Uh, and the second condition says that all agents should have strict and positive self-reliance, which means that each agent should try to use its own information in the learning process. So it's also a very natural process. And the third one says that there exists an agent with a positive prior uh, belief on the true state, which means that the true state should be included in the state space at the beginning. Right? So it's also very uh, natural indeed. So the most more important is the last condition, which says that there does not exist any other state which is observation equivalent to the true state from the point of all the agents in the network, which is uh, what we call the, the condition of wisdom of cross. I just uh, use an, uh, a very simple example to show what do we mean by the wisdom of cross. Mm -hmm. Suppose that we just have three agents in the network, and suppose that a star is the true state. And suppose that eventually agent one can, could get to the conclusion that that I know the true state should be among A1, A2, and A star. But I'm not sure which of the three states is the true state. So that's the conclusion from agent one. And the conclusion of agent two is that I know the true state should be among the three states A2, A3, A star. And for agent three, it says that I know the true state should be among A1, A3, and A star. Okay. So put the three agents together, we could get the only right true state A star. So if we have a sufficiently large number of agents in the network, and it's quite possible that we could find the unique true state as that. So that's what we call the wisdom, wisdom of cross. And then we also generalize this model to assume that what if there are just a, a fraction of informed agents in the network? which means that only a fraction of agents in the, in the network could have some information about, about the true state. Uh, 
uh, uh, take the flood as, uh, as an example, for example, Japan and Vietnam, they do not have their own information. They just send ships and airplanes to help searching for the dead, right? Uh, United States, Malaysia, UK, Australia, they have their own information. They could distribute uh, information, right? So with, with this multi-court model, we still prove that, that under some conditions, we could also achieve the true assertion, the true assertion learning. So, uh, uh, here is the simulation result, which says that as networks become more and more inhomogeneous, we just need uh, less and less informed agents in the network to achieve true social learning. Uh, I think I should have to stop here, right? So basically, our, our researchers on social learning shows that randomly and uh, friendship preserving benefits of social, social learning. By, by friendship preserving, we mean that if two agents are friends at one time, then they will try to be friends even though they have quite this similar uh, opinion. So uh, we prove that such kind of a mechanism benefits a lot of social learning. And uh, the second result we achieve is that social learning could be achieved with just a fraction of informed, informed agents uh, in NELC. However, the last word uh, I, I should stress is that in fact, our re results shows that social learning, social learning requires a lot of information, which I think uh, explain a bit why in our society social learning is such more difficult for us to, for example, why why it takes such a long time for us to search for the MH370. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you for Professor Wang's uh, interesting uh, talk. Now it's the time for questions. We have some minutes. Any questions? Yes, thank you for an interesting talk. Um, you, you were focusing on, on the aspect that if you have a, a small fraction or a fraction of, of informed um, uh, agents, whether, whether that was more likely to, to lead to, to the correct um, result. And I was wondering, have you looked at the opposite, where, in a, where you introduce uh, a fraction of misinformed um, agents, whether that could, could uh, bring you to the wrong conclusion? Yes. In fact, the, the, I think that's a very important topic, which as researchers just uh, could start to investigate this problem a few years ago. That's uh, just as I said, how much is room for those misinformation? But could this info in misinformation disappear, which means that could we still eventually know the true, true, uh, the true state, which means that agents in the, in the network uh, could more or less uh, have the ability to uh, correct those misinformation. That's very important. That, that's on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, uh, in this case, in this case, uh, there are some research which shows that sometimes we could have the persistent disagreement in the network, which means that we couldn't find the the role of missing information. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other? Yes. Hope or not? 
you still need an assumption that your majority of your population actually holds the true belief, do you? Yes. Okay. So you uh, you're not breaking that assumption. Okay. Yeah. Questions? And uh, actually, I have a one. So you, in your talk, you mentioned that uh, it's important uh, to the system uh, of the agents to reach the consensus and also to find the true state. And but uh, I noticed that there's uh, no time limitation. No time limitation because because for example for searching the MH yes uh, it's very important uh, to find uh, yes in a limited uh, time I think have you considered that? Yes yes yes. All our theoretical results here are just a hypothetical results, which we assume that social learning could be achieved as time tends to infinity, but as, as you mentioned. But uh, one of our results about consensus is infinite time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Let us thank the Professor Wang again. <laughs>